right. The question is, why is it that the United States, uh, although it has, it doesn't have any less guns than a country like Canada, and it's got the same amount of violence in the media as Japan or Germany, why does it have such a high rate of gun uh, violence? Yeah, gun-related deaths. All right. If you base it on the, the on the Michael Moore, remember the Michael Moore's movie is now you know, eight, ten years old. And he said that there were 7 million guns in Canada, which is about 30 million people. That's when he did the movie. The United States today has as many guns as we have people. So there's 300 million plus people, and there are about 300 million guns. So it's really not the same. The other thing is that we are culture, and you've got to go with Charlton Heston on this one from the movie. We are a culture based on violence. We entered this land in, in a violent way. We used the, the gun to help us win uh, the territory we now call the United States. And that's legitimate. However, there's little difference between what the United States had to do to form itself as compared to what the Germans did and what the Japanese did, since you've mentioned those two countries. The Germans have had a 3,000 year history of violence. The Japanese, all you have to do is go back and look at the civil wars that were conducted uh, with the various shoguns, the seven shogun period, the, the, between 1200 and 1500, before the, um, uh, the Tokugawa shogunate, 300 years of civil war. Now, they didn't have guns, but they had the same level of violence. Murder and mayhem was part of the nature of Japanese. That's why we like them so much, because they're so much like us. And yet, in that 250-year period called the Tokugawa regime, they took their weapons and they melted them down and they've changed who they are, and they turn their anger to corporations. So you know that all the big corporations used to be on um, the old daimyos, they used to be what used to be the, the shoguns. And that's how they've morphed. We, in this country, have just morphed into more and more violence. And what explains that? I don't have an answer to that. Oh, um, yeah, no. Oh. Do you think do you think the NRA is responsible for any of the violence and gun related deaths? You can't say that they're responsible. Are they responsible for the atmosphere and environment in, a, in our country that leads to violence? Yes. Are they personally responsible for the violence? Probably not. At the same time, every single time, as you saw from the Michael Moore film, there was a major incident in that time period after Columbine. The NRA showed up a few weeks later to hold some sort of rally in favor of guns. Now, they promote an attitude that says that shoot first and ask questions later is better than using reason and diplomacy to solve a problem. And so although they're not personally responsible for the violence, they have created an atmosphere in which that kind of violence is become, a, become the norm. I was telling my, my kids the other day, they, they, they laughed at me, they didn't believe me. In England, they don't carry guns. The police do not carry guns in England. The only time a policeman is issued a gun is when they have a specific incident in which they know that they have to use the gun, and there's only a specialized handful of British police that can use those guns. Um, they do not carry guns because the atmosphere of violence that goes to the level of gun killings doesn't exist in the country that created us. That racism plays a part yes. in the death rate. Okay. Yes. Um, in fact, there's a big book that's just out in the last few months. It's called uh, The New Jim Crow. And it's the story of the problem of prisons in our country. We have over 2 million uh, people in our prisons. The rate of prison um, uh, expanse has gone up like 900% over the past 30 years. And who is the main person in prison? It's mainly black or Latino poor, mainly on drug charges. Um, and it proves that racism is still rampant in our country because the white boys who use certain drugs don't get arrested, but black boys do. Uh, we were just going to ask uh, the drug trade, which wasn't mentioned in the Michael Moore film. Do you think that might be another reason? Yeah. Uh, because of. Uh, yes. If you if you if you're at the point in your life where the only way you can survive is by selling, carrying you know, mules, whatever, carrying drugs, that's the only way you can survive, then you're going to protect it to the death.
just look at what's happening in northern Mexico right now. The civil war that's happening there between the drug cartels. Why are they fighting it out so violently? Because it's their way of life. Because it's the only way they can survive. Now that NAFTA has been proven a failure and all those thousands of northern Mexicans have no jobs, they're taking sides. And they're not taking the government side. They're taking one drug cartel side or another. All they have to do is watch weeds. <laughs> And uh, poverty, I'm sure. Poverty, absolutely. Um, obviously, if you're poor and you're desperate, you will do desperate things. So the government's role in trying to eliminate the problem or lessen it, uh, well, what do you believe should be the next step? Well, the Supreme Court, when it ruled that the Second Amendment applied to individuals and not to groups, which is what the way it had been applied for 200 years, has set a precedent that has basically said that violence is okay in our country, that gun violence is okay in our country, and that needs to be um, overturned. Gun laws have to be put in place that strictly regulate things like 31 uh, um, gun uh, bullet clips. Um, I love Chris Rock, who I think has got the best idea of all. $5,000 a bullet. Yeah. I'd love to kill you, but it's too expensive. Yeah. Um, if... Uh because uh, changes in Congress are so, you can't expect something to change so suddenly, uh, seeing as how we can't just change the Second Amendment, what about the other types of, uh, the other sources of gun violence in the, uh, the United States, such as racism, poverty, and uh, drug trade? How, yeah. can we, yeah. how can we affect those to... That's such a hard thing because we become such a segregated society that it's going to be very, very difficult to overcome this. We don't have another Martin Luther King to try to lead us out of this wilderness. And you've got the situation um, in which the majority of violence that occurs in an inner city where it's mostly black or Hispanic is black on black, Hispanic on Hispanic. And so how do you change that? To change the entire culture requires the kind of money that we're spending in Afghanistan and Iraq. And until we do away with our continued economic need to be an empire, and until we take those billions and trillions and we turn them to our own people, and we say to the people in our inner cities, we're going to build you new schools. We're going to make them work. We're going to build you facilities so that you will not, that you'll choose to play baseball instead of choosing to shoot each other over, you know, um, a couple of ounces of crap. And until we do that, until we have a completely re-established mindset, it's never going to change. What about the entertainment industry? Uh, do you think that um, the entertainment industry in the United States, movies, video games, TV shows, uh, contribute towards the death rate? Min uh, minimally. Gunnery? There are occasions when someone who's mentally unbalanced will have used that kind of material to get them ready to do whatever they want to do. But if you look at the rest of the world, they're watching the same movies, they're watching the same videos as every one of us. And yet our murder rate is, you know, a hundred times more than other countries. So although there's some minor evidence that points in that direction for an occasional person that the great majority of people who commit this kind of gun violence has nothing to do with what we watch and what other forms of entertainment.